And now let's take a step back and look at it from across the room and say, okay, how could we inject some delight for our clients so that we're actually living the thing we said we do in all of our marketing copy, in all of our, you know, everything on our website says that we do this. Well, let's make it true every single time for every single client and writing it down gives you the opportunity to do that intentionally. You want to know the secret to scaling profitably and effectively? Don't we all? In reality, it's not much of a secret. It's just something that not a lot of companies decide to prioritize. But it's the one thing that I consistently see across the board make a difference in growing lean, resilient companies. It's something that can be a competitive advantage, delight your clients and customers, help your team be more effective, and increase your profitability. It's not necessarily sexy, but it makes a big impact. I'm Susan Bowles, and you're listening to Break the Ceiling, the show where we break down unconventional strategies you can use to save time, boost your profit, and increase your operational capacity. Have I built the suspense enough? Are you ready for me to let you in on this super secret sauce? Here you go. The secret to effectively and profitably scaling your business. Build a solid process, and then make sure it's documented. That's it. That's the whole secret. It's so simple, but it's so rarely executed. It's easy to procrastinate, to deprioritize, to get distracted with other more exciting projects. But having solid documented processes affects every area of your business ecosystem. It allows you to deliver better service to your clients, to onboard team members with ease, to deliver projects and services more profitably, to free up time for you and your team, to use software to automate tasks. It really all comes down to your process. And my guest today is one of my favorite fellow process geeks. Meet Tamara Kemper, the founder of The Process Mavens, where she helps CEOs get back time and peace of mind through systematizing and documenting their business. And we're gonna geek out on process and documentation, how to build it, where to document your process, and the giant return you can get out of investing in it. Hey, Tamara, thanks so much for being here. Hey, thank you so much for having me, Susan. I'm happy to be here. So you are kind of a process guru. Uh, so talk to me a little bit about what it means to you to have processes in your business. We all know we're supposed to have them. Um, we talk about them all the time, but what does that really mean to you? For me, it means that everyone is clear on what they own in the business. And that means not only the things that they do, but also the outcomes that they're supposed to be responsible for and that they know how to do those things. And so that may mean that, you know, you just written everything down. It may mean that you've got some really amazing systems built that kind of make sure that you do them repeatedly and reliably the same time every every time same way every time but really it's it's just having that clarity of here's how we do things here's who does what and here's what the outcomes are that drive us to our business's success mm, I like that that is a perfect definition so <laughs> getting solid processes kind of defined and documented it we we both know it's a really important step to being able to scale your business but mm -hmm. it can also be very daunting and something that's really easy to postpone or put off or put on the back burner so from your work with clients why do you think that is? What makes it so hard and so intimidating? Oh, it's just never the most urgent thing. And so I'm sure, you know, everybody's heard of the, the Eisenhower matrix and the importance versus the urgent. And it is so important, but it's never urgent because you can always just kind of hobble along with the way things are today. And so to really set aside time and dedicate it to to really recording your processes. And by the way, it doesn't have to be written down. It could be video, it could be um, even audio, like just, just talking through the processes. Like that takes time. It takes somebody to manage it and make sure it gets done. And it just always gets pushed to the end of the list because there will be an emergency that needs your attention today. <laughs> it's just <laughs> not ever processes. And I think, I, I think you're right. I think it's, 
it's never urgent until it mm -hmm. absolutely desperately is and they run up against this right. capacity wall or they have to hire somebody um, right. and then all of a sudden it becomes this desperate emergency mm -hmm. to try and get it done when really it's such a core foundational piece of yeah. being able to grow is having that process having that documentation because that's really that's the thing that allows you to actually scale is knowing what the process is so that you can duplicate it without having to reinvent the wheel every time and spend that time figuring out what the process is that's right and and i, I appreciate you correcting that I, I said it's never an emergency and you are absolutely right until it is until like, it absolutely because is because like, it will be <laughs> And Eventually maybe that emergency, that right, like maybe it really is an emergency or maybe it's like, oh my gosh, I need to scale and we need to mm -hmm. do it right now because we need to get to that next level. Like that is an emergency in, in some cases. So thank you. You are, you are correct. <laughs> yeah. So frequently I see that with um, clients or with people that I'm talking to is that they have this real drive to grow and they mm -hmm. don't see that the thing that is actually holding them back from being able to do that is having a process like that that lack of process is the thing that means that every member of their team is at capacity that they have such a hard time finding somebody to come um, join the team once they have somebody on the team it's so hard to get them up to speed fast enough and mm -hmm. um, so over and over again I see this is really the bottleneck that most people run into and don't realize that that's what they're running into. That's right. Yep. So and, and when you're not doing it on purpose, then who knows what the actual things that are <laughs> happening in your business are so that that's a whole other. Yes, <laughs> totally. <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about what a kind of well do documented, well defined process looks like and how is that different for maybe a one to three person team or a solopreneur versus somebody with a larger team? Well, so I actually would think about it even a little bit differently than that. I think about it in terms of how many people do a particular role. And so the reason mm -hmm. that a small business with one or two people, you, you might think about it differently is because there's only one person doing each thing usually, or one person doing lots of things. And so in those cases, the thing you're going to document is really just, I think of it as an insurance policy. So it's a way to make sure that if you, if something happens to you or if you need help or if you need to hire quickly, you already have a plan for how these things get done. Now, of course, along with that comes by writing it down, by documenting it, you're gonna make the process better, you're gonna make the experience better for your clients, so everybody wins. It's all a win-win, beautiful thing. But for those types of, of roles where there's maybe one person doing the thing, I always am a proponent of just do a video. So pop on loom.com, um, even open up a Zoom meeting and just have yourself be in there. You can even close your camera if you don't want your face to be on there and, and <laughs> share your screen. And just pretend someone is sitting next to you and talk them through it. Talk them through what you do. Talk them through what the purpose of the thing you're about to show them is. And just step by step do it. And if you run into a problem, explain what happened and how you fixed it. Because guess what? That's probably going to happen when they're when they're faced with that process themselves. And then all you need to do is catalog it. So that might look like, you know, popping open a, a, a Google Sheet and just, you know, putting those links in with a quick description of each one. It might be a Google Doc. It might be a, you know, Word Doc, whatever it needs to be. But just something simple. Don't overthink it. And just make it part of your daily process that maybe you do one, just record a video every day, just one video and you'll get through it. On the other hand, if you have a role in your business where there are lots of people that do that role and you need to be able to make sure that everyone's doing it reliably and consistently and that the experience for your clients um, or your customers is consistent, those are the cases where we're actually talk, talking a bit more about training. So training and documentation, a little bit different. If, if I know that I'm going to need to hire a lot of people in a particular role, I want to make sure that that onboarding experience, that that training experience is consistent each and every time. And so I'm going to be starting with the end in mind. I'm going to be thinking about what are all of the different competencies that this role needs to have if I'm going to allow them to be on their own, if I'm going to allow them to kind of um, 
do the job unsupervised. And then you work backward from that. Okay, so how would I know if they were able to do those things? Okay, so if I know that they're able to do those things because now I've, I've assessed them or I've got some checklist or I've got some you know tests that they have to take or some things they have to demonstrate, now I start to build the content and that might look like um, an online course. Um, we love to use Trainual is one of our partners um, that we build a lot of our online courses. There's a, there's a ton of systems out there you can build. This is where you're starting to invest in a more robust training program. Mm, I like that. So say that we've, we've spent the time to document our process um, and we've either made videos or created a more formalized process how does that having that process that very defined solid reliable process change the effectiveness of your team well i think that the biggest thing is it's going if you really are you know bringing people on at a regular basis or even just if you have that that multiple people doing that role it's going to give everybody confidence in this is the way we do things here. And it also then makes sure that you're continually improving that and you're continually updating that, or, or you should be anyway. Um, I guess not everybody does. That should absolutely <laughs> be a piece of it. Like you can't ever basically be done documenting or, or developing training. You have to do it forever because your business will change. And so you need to go back and, and have somebody who's responsible for for keeping those things updated. But um, I find that it really, it helps businesses get to their goals more effectively because now they don't have to sit there and babysit um, a new hire. They don't have to um, wonder what is happening with their frontline employees. They are de designing that intentionally. They're designing it on purpose and they're making sure that everybody has the same training and the same um, resources for doing it the way that the business owner intends. Yeah, and I think the the piece that I think often gets missed is when folks are procrastinating creating the documentation or creating the tools or you know putting this off <laughs> pushing it down the to-do list um, mm -hmm. we often spend more time um, thinking about doing it than any of this actually takes yes uh, yes but the the piece that is missing is that the, I think the return on the investment of spending your time on documenting these processes is that, you know, it's one, I've seen it work as a great recruiting tool. Mm -hmm. um, it, it increases retention of employees because they come in, they feel very confident about what they're supposed to do, what their role is. You know, we've all been in that job where we showed up and for the first like three weeks, we were just sitting around waiting for them to get us our computer access yep. and doing nothing and feeling useless and feeling like you're not a contributing member of the team. And I think when you spend the time to um, document the process, to have a solid employee onboarding process, that really goes a long way to one, making them much more effective, much faster. They they know how to do their job a whole lot faster than they would um, if you just kind of threw them in there and they had to figure it out on their own. Um, but it also means they're going to stick around longer because they're happier. That's right. People people who understand the understand what is expected of them, mm -hmm. um, I think, are so much happier in what they're doing overall. Well, and I I can't agree with you more. I think every little thing we do in our business speaks volumes about what we believe, uh, what our what our company culture is about. And so if you in your company culture or your core values have anywhere in there something about caring or humans or team or you know, just anything mm -hmm. that's about people connection, there is nothing that says I care about my team more than a really thoughtful employee onboarding or really thoughtful training or documentation because it's basically saying like we did this really hard not uh not urgent thing because we care about you we care about you feeling productive about you feeling like you're competent and you know what to do um and and i just think that that that's actually something i i care about a whole lot is just making sure that people's um core values and the things that they really care about from a culture standpoint are reflected 
in their in their documentation and in their trainings. And so just having it at all is a huge, huge way to show that. Yeah, I like that because I think a lot of people who tend to um, who who do genuinely care about their team mm -hmm. kind of stop at, well, I want to pay them well. Um, you know, yeah. that's that's the thing that they are focused on. And not to say that that's not also an important part of the pie, but this um, consciously spending time to make sure that they feel valued and they feel like you've spent time considering how to bring them on carefully and that you're you're living that part of really caring about your people. I, I love that that point. <laughs> like uh, it, it just it takes it to the next level and I have seen so many organizations where um, maybe they maybe they weren't paying the highest salaries but because it was such a great place to work because they genuinely cared about their people yep. nobody left <laughs> yep yep um, and, and and I think too like it doesn't mean that you're using those processes or using those training. I think something that some people worry about is like, well, if I if I'm dictating everything, I'm just taking the human element out. And I totally disagree with that, because when you are clear about what you want your team to do and the ways that are important. So, yeah, maybe you don't write every little thing down for every single role because you do want to leave room for the human parts of, of your business, but like giving them that framework and giving them the expectation, that is such a gift. That is such yes. a, you know, like, let's take away the guesswork of how to be successful in this role and then, and then let them, and then empower them to innovate and then empower your team to make it better. But, but give them the basics to get started so that they can take that and run with it. Yes, I love that. Now what? That's the question I hear from a lot of service-based business owners. Maybe you've been asking yourself, now what too? You've built your business from the ground up and your business works, but maybe it's not growing. You keep bumping into a ceiling on how many clients you can take on and maybe how much money you can make. And maybe now you're even wondering if your business has staying power. You might be keenly aware of how small challenges could easily balloon into big problems as the market and the economy change. I help entrepreneurs decide how to take action so they can build more resilient business that's primed for growth. I combine strategic thinking with a background in business finance, data, and operations to see the patterns that have your business bumping against a growth ceiling. I'll show you exactly what you can do to break through and make more money all while making sure the foundation under your business is strong. I have a few new client openings for my quarterly or monthly advisory packages. When you work with me, I'll examine your financial reports to spot opportunities. We'll talk about where you're feeling friction and discover ways you can reclaim your time and attention. We'll dig into how to scale your operations without sacrificing quality so you can increase your capacity and make more money. And each action you take will be informed by strategic financial insight and data-driven operational planning. The result, you'll feel wildly capable and in control, and you'll finally break through that ceiling. Ready to learn more about working with me as your business advisor? Go to scalespark.co slash advisor. So let's shift a little bit and talk about how that solid documented process impacts the client experience. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. So I have found again and again, it is, it is almost like magic that when you get a team in a room, so if you pull together, you know, let's say three different cross-functional employees, so representing different teams, and you sit them down and you go, okay, we're going to lock ourselves in this room for an hour and we're going to map out or we're going to write down or whatever it is. We're going to figure out what this process sh is and what it should be. It is almost like magic that you will find at least two, three ways to make it better right then and there. Because just having those people in the room and having that conversation that they normally wouldn't have because they'd just be in it, they'd be doing it, 
first of all, lets them hear each other's perspectives and each other's pain points. So when you've got one person that maybe is dealing directly with the customer or the client, that person is hearing the direct needs of the customer or client. And the person who's two, two steps removed might not be hearing those things. So now you've got a dialogue going about what the concerns are and what the problems are. And we can come to an agreement about what the process should be. So now I've already, just by writing it down, I've made it better. And hopefully you've set the intention that we're, we're gonna make it work better, but not just for us internally, we're gonna make this work better for our clients. And so it's, like I said, it's magic. You just write it down and the process gets better. And then you start to find ways to make it better. Yeah, I think for for me, I'm a huge fan of process as a competitive advantage, as a mm -hmm. client delight, delight aspect, because yep. there's this kind of quality to somebody who is making a sale who knows that they have a solid process they know they are going to deliver on this because mm -hmm. they've defined the process and they've said these are the steps um, we continue to evolve this process we make it better but we know that every single client that goes through this process has the same experience we know that no balls yes. are going to get dropped we know that there aren't going to be missed deadlines we know that we have a solid view over the you know, how this project is going, we know where to troubleshoot issues. And I think that can play out in so many ways in the sales process um, and in the experience overall of working with you. You bet, yep. And, and I will add to that too, that just like we talked before about, you know, if your values include something about humans and connection, that you should be reflecting that in your business operations. Well, if you've got some kind of value, and I hope you do, about excellence <laughs> or, um, you know, delight, as you said, for your clients, well, if you don't know what the process is or, or how you want it to be, you can't inject those moments of delight because there is no consistent way. And when you have a clear way to do it, like maybe you just start by just, let's just write down what it is today. Let's, it's not perfect and we don't love it, but let's get clear on what it is. And now let's take a step back and look at it from across the room and say, okay, how could we inject some delight for our clients so that we're actually living the thing we said we do? in all of our marketing copy, in all of our, you know, everything on our website says that we do this. Well, let's make it true every single time for every single client and writing it down gives you the opportunity to do that intentionally. Hmm, I like that. So what other parts of the business have you seen where having that solid process makes a difference? Have you seen financial impacts or software choices, ability to scale? Um, resilience what what have you seen be impacted by this kind of key tool of getting your processes down yeah well so i can give you an example one of my clients um they had a really kind of haphazard way of of hiring and onboarding um, a very key role in their business so they have lots of this this role um, it really is their frontline employee that works with their clients and you know the, the people who were who were doing the hiring and who were doing the onboarding were very knowledgeable very um, very good at what they did but everybody was doing it differently and so what we were able to do was to define out here is what we want the experience to be we were able to then implement some software to automate about half of it <clears throat> so now they weren't you know chasing applicants for documents anymore photo ids and all that junk that they were getting that all sent to them so that took away a big ton of the work that they had to do so now we're reducing the employee time on stuff that they really don't need to be spending their time on and then we were able to take that all the way through creating a better and more aligned uh, caregiver training um, that really just makes the, makes the caregivers feel, uh, that's, the, that's the frontline employee, makes them feel like, wow, this is, this is the kind of place I wanna work. This is, this is um, I, I feel prepared, I feel equipped. And just like you were saying, like they really feel like they're able to be um, 
productive right away and effective right away. So it was it was kind of all those different pieces together. So t- you know, getting efficiency on their time, getting the all of the data that they need related to the to the um, applicants in one place, and then making sure that the way that they're bringing people on and the way that they're training them is effective and giving them the outcome as a business that they need from that employee. Hmm. I love that you brought up using software to automate uh, mm-hmm. part of this so that, you know, the people, the the human people are spending their time more on things that are more valuable. They're not doing low value things like yes. collecting photo IDs or um, grabbing information from clients or um, my favorite one is setting up client new client folders. Um, so you know, the, the people on the <laughs> staff are uh, doing things that only humans can do and the software is doing things that are low value that don't need to be done by a human there's no decision to be made it's just the same rote task over and over Um, but you really can't utilize the software until you're clear on what the process should be and the by virtue of using a software you're you end up increasing your efficiency you can move faster through the process but you can also save money because you're not paying a human being to do something that a human being doesn't necessarily need to be doing and your human beings can be doing things like serving more clients because client interaction is something that's really difficult to um turn automated Uh, certain parts you can automate like onboarding email sequences and that kind of thing but Mm -hmm. um that human experience that high touch kind of experience that a lot of clients or companies are going for is kind of impossible without humans but having humans spend their time doing things that humans don't need to be doing um, is really one of those pieces of the pie that allows you to scale like we were talking about at the beginning the end result is you know these are the tools that you can implement that you can scale with but you can't do them because you can't tell the software what to do until you know what the process is (laughs) that's right i was just smiling and nodding through all of that and i basically feel like maybe we share part of a brain because that was i think yes (laughs) i agree with all of the things you just said and with an exclamation point yeah that uh it's it's there's no reason to put your staff through creating client files or staff. No. That's just Zapier is your friend. It's pain. <laughs> it's just mean and cruel. Oh, don't and I do know, it. Like so many, so many business owners because we get kind of sold this um, bill of goods that you know hire a VA and they'll take everything off your plate. Um, mm-hmm. Ends up not being very true for very many people because. They hire a VA, they don't have a process, they don't know what the process is, they don't know what it should be. Yes. Then they yeah. get disappointed that their VA isn't doing what they want their VA to do, but they haven't clearly communicated what those expectations are. And they also are using a VA to do things that is maybe not the best use of their time either. Yep. And, and I'm so glad you brought up because that is a, a thing I've seen so many times that people bring on somebody like a number two, a, you know, a VA or an operations manager or, you know, somebody like that to kind of figure it all out. Like that person needs to figure it all out. Well, maybe they can, but that delicate balance between figuring some things out before you bring them on um, Mm -hmm. and also, you know, hiring the right person who actually has the ability to to be innovative with process and to put those things in place. Like there's a there's a big that that's a tricky scenario, I guess is what I want to say. That if mm-hmm. you're expecting to hire a VA um, and pay you know the least amount possible for for said VA, and you want them to figure out all your processes, you are going to be sorely disappointed. Yeah, that's not going to work. It's not going to work out. <laughs> it never does. No, but so many people do it. Mm-hmm. Because that's what that's what we get told. Oh, you're overwhelmed. Oh, you're too busy. Mm-hmm. Hire a VA and it, it'll be magical. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not. It, it can be, you know, it, you can, it you can, can pay you lower right. price if you have mm-hmm. an excellent process and yes. you have some clear expectations and they know what to follow. Or yes. it can work out if you're willing to pay top dollar and you hire somebody with lots of experience who understands um, business operations intimately and is excited about learning your business and helping you define what that is. But 
you can't, can't pay nothing and get <laughs> get high ways. level operation strategy. Like that's just not how it works. That's right. That's <laughs> right. You got to pick your poison. So, is there anything that you think we should talk about around process or um, systems that we haven't really touched on yet? Hmm. Well, I could talk about process and systems all day, so <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard for me to just pick me one. Too. Yeah, it's real fun. Um, yeah, I think one of the things that I would I would want to talk a little bit about is I think it's really important to zoom in on the individual processes and and as I said before, you know, just take a little bit a day or a little bit a week and just kind of make incremental progress. But I. I don't want to miss the opportunity to also stress the importance of the the leaders of the company and particularly the CEO first or in conjunction defining what success looks like within the year, within a quarter, within 3 years, whatever whatever length of time is important right now and then making sure that The people that are responsible for each of the key areas of your business are clear on that and Mm. also are clear on what they are expected to do inside that same time frame that will be um, that will make it happen. And so, for example, if you have, you know, a sales leader or a sales rep or, or however large your company is and that person doesn't understand that you're you know, building type of business A and they think you're building something completely different, they may be documenting processes that are taking the business or their department in a slightly different way than you actually want to go. So it's okay to just get started. And I don't, I I, want to be careful to not say like you have to do things in this very formulaic way. First you do this and then you do this. Because actually the, the biggest and most important step is to just get started, just start. But there is a really wonderful opportunity to, as you're documenting processes and maybe doing it in sort of a scrappy incremental way, also be making sure that you are aligning the vision and the goals and the objectives of your company and communicating those frequently and having them measurable and clear. It all goes together. Oh, I love that. Because I really, I don't think we can ever over communicate on our vision as business owners Mm -hmm. to our team. Like we always think we're being super clear and we think we've said, um, you know, exactly what, what needs to happen. And so often that's not true. And the person that you're trying to communicate with is um, not on the same page and they're trying to meet your expectations, but you weren't necessarily clear about them or they changed in your head and you forgot to tell people that they changed. Or Um, you think you only need to tell Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't. Um, or you think you only need to tell like the you know two people, and there's you know five people in your company or ten people in your company because you see some of the other people as not needing to know that information. I find mm. that a lot where people are like, well, they don't need to know that. Yes, they do because they are representing your company, and if you are if you have a vision that you are building you know a, a elite brand or a luxury brand and they don't know that, well, they may not be behaving in that way with your clients. So you need to let everyone know. And and the level of detail that everyone needs will vary, of course, depending on their role. Um, but everybody should know generally where the company is headed. Yeah, I don't think there's, there's no benefit to keeping people in the dark <laughs> on any no. of this because, no. you know, they're, everything in your business is connected. Every decision that you make Mm -hmm. is going to affect another part and probably all the other parts of your business. And so I think your point is an excellent one that making sure everybody is on board with that vision and every part of your, every every part of your team, every part of your business reflects that, I think is just such a strong point. I think that's a perfect place to uh, wrap up on. So where can our listeners find you if they want to connect and learn more about what you do? So I am found at theprocessmavens.com. That's my website. And I'm on LinkedIn a fair bit. So you can find me Tamara Kemper. I'm 
I'm the only one that I found on there. I'm sure there's another one out there. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be the only one going on and on about processes. So Right. Yeah, you, won't, you're easy. It won't find. be hard. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. And thank you for sharing your expertise and geeking out with me a little bit on uh, process today. I was really looking forward to it, and it did not disappoint. So thank you for having me. (laughs) Investing time and attention in building your processes can be the thing that can help you break through gross ceilings, increase your profitability, allow you to automate parts of your business, or retain team members. If your business is an ecosystem with all the parts being interconnected, then your processes define how they're connected. They're the thing that allows everything to flow through your business seamlessly. The process defines the life cycle of the ecosystem. Your processes are literally how you do business. So it's worth actually taking a little bit of time to define what that looks like. So you can communicate that to your clients, to your team, and sometimes just remind yourself. Next week, I'm talking to Melanie Richards about how your software choices impact your ecosystem and how your decisions in the rest of your ecosystem drive what the best software choices are for your business. So hit subscribe in your favorite podcast player so you don't miss it. Break the Ceiling is produced by Yellow House Media. Our production coordinator is Sean McMullen. This episode is edited by Marty Seafeld with production assistance by Kristen Rumbeck.